that runs roughshod, roughshod of the uh, Constitution, the highest law in the land. Lex Rex. The law is king. And soon as the bureaucrats want to run around and try to start snatching their guns, next will be the FEMA camp, concentration camp. That's that has happened in every society where they've disarmed the people. The people right away were murdered. Whether it's Hitler, or Hitler's Third Reich or Mao Zedong of China, of Stalin. Or any other evil regime around the world. As soon as the people with this on, tyranny starts. So, so how are you going to defend yourself? With a butter knife? In ancient, in ancient uh, England, you couldn't even own, own a butter knife. You could only even think it was considered a weapon. And so when the marauding bands of Pirates, knights, and everything came through and raped your women in your town, pillaged it, and robbed it. You couldn't do anything to defend yourself. You were helpless. Robber Baron. That's why we have this Constitution. And in and in inalienable, inalienable, meaning it can't be touched. You always had mentally ill people in the world. I believe a lot of this is a psyops, false flag psyops of that. But you always have a lot of mentally, mentally, mentally ill people in the world. And they can use anything. I think the number one is vehicular death from drunk drivers every year. I'm the last time I checked. Are you going to ban cars? A gun is nothing but a, this is like a hammer, a tool. If you leave it laying there, it will never pick itself up and fire and, and kill anything. It's all this hype. It's exactly what it is. Propaganda hype. And they're following the same road and path as the rest of the despots and tyrants have throughout history. They want to disarm the people before they start killing the people. Euthanizing the people. Genocide, fratricide, homicide to be. And bad people are always going to get guns. It's amazing, I'm on this topic. But it needs to be said. You're not going to stop a bad guy from getting a gun. He can get a gun going down the street. There's people who go down the street with shopping carts in the hood. I remember growing up, you can get a gun in. That's how free it is. How easy it is. You call them burners. You easily get one. And still can. So you ain't gonna stop somebody that wanna get one that ain't that that's a felon. And they don't care about no background checks. They gonna get most of the gangsters and everything aren't le legally packing, but they're packing. So you're not gonna stop people from getting access to firearms. Care how many of these nuts pop off? Or program MK Ultra Black Bot Black Bot nuts pop off. Deep state false flag nuts pop off. Still gonna get the access to guns. God said kill everybody and everything. What's your answer for this? Uh, you talking to the honey trip. This, this is for you. Let me read it again. Now go smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that he had and spare them not. Kill them all. Kill the king too. I'm going to go over this slow. Ain't going to speedy Gonzalez to this one. Oh no. But slay both men and woman. Usually they take the women. Bring them into their tribe. And they become their concubines. Slaves. That's normal. These sages usually spare the women and kids. He said kill everybody. Spare it or not, but slay both men and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Kill the animals too. 
And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telem, 200,000 footmen. And Saul came to the city. And Saul said unto, okay, I'm going to skip all that. Okay, now let me skip on down. That was good I read that. I wouldn't, that wasn't part of it. But start at verse 16. Now he had told them to kill everybody and everything Saul disobeyed. He spared the best of the sheep, the oxen, just fill you in. He uh, picked and chose what they wanted. They spared the king. He disobeyed God's word from God's prophet. And God's pierced. Then said Samuel unto Saul, and this is verse 16, so slide down to 15, 16. Then Samuel, to Samuel said unto Saul, Stay and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said unto me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou was little and out on sight. See, God will take you back to your humble beginnings before he made you a king and a priest. That's what some of you now have been in the way for a while. And God has prospered you and blessed you as priest and king of your house or houses, or homes, and you've been prosperous. But you haven't forgot. You need a lesson in humility. You need to cast your crowns before the throne of God. And this, is, this is God reminding this king here how small he was before he made him big. Some of you need to be reminded that I got big headed. And I ain't talking about being humble before man. That's what a lot of, that's where the phoniness comes from. Because a lot of the man's going to think most of us Christians are arrogant anyway. Because we have sheer confidence in God and his word. And it may come off as arrogant. But I bow to the throne of God, not man. <laughs> don't care what man think. Really don't. That's when you're truly free in Christ. He that his son said free is free indeed. You don't care about man and his traditions. And what he feel a pastor should look like, talk like, walk like. I don't care. Could care less. That's your tradition. Now, most more than likely, trample right over. Or without even trying to realize I'm trampling over, just do it naturally. Not that I'm going out of my way to do it, it just comes natural. I serve God. And a lot of ministry forget when you're serving God, we're unorthodox anyway. Jesus was very unorthodox. Nothing traditional about him. That's why they heard him, told the truth. They heard him, put him on the cross. His truth was abrasive. And he, he wasn't PC. He wasn't PC about Christ. Got too many PC Christians running around worried about hurting people's feelings. The truth is abrasive. Let the chips fall where they may. But we're to tell the truth. The truth is shit set you free, me free, and everybody else here. And they don't necessarily have to have tact and all that at all times. Sometimes it's just brutal or raw. True. It's what we're supposed to get. Not water it down or dilute it. Then God tell his men to say something they better say it. In this book, you're reading it for yourself. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord, he made you king. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them. Now the reason God told him to wipe them out, because if you didn't wipe the Amalekites out, they, they're sworn enemies to God and God's people. They're going to wipe you out. He said, Wipe all of them out. Wipe their name out from under the sun. Or these sinners are going to come back and wipe you out. Now these people represent types of sin in the mind that plague God's people. That's why the Bible tells us to put away the old man and live under the new man, the Holy Spirit, the engraftation of God's Spirit. And it's a day-to-day -day death. That's why what the cross represents, dying to yourself. It hurts. It's painful. Painful for me. But God had brought me a long ways from desires that I used to love though I couldn't live without. I'm living without in love. <laughs> That's God, testimony to him. He makes us new creations in Christ Jesus, more Christ-like. As you plug in with faith, 
Christ is formed in your heart by faith, faith, faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith in His Word, acting on His Word. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? Obey. Now, raise your hand, class. If you think you know what that word means, you don't hear me teach on this word several times. From the French word, obeyer, which means to lean with intent and focus and pay attention to what the sayer is saying. That's where do we get the word obey from, a word that's almost been erased from the English language. You know, I think they're taking it out of the marriage vows. Obey. But God's old-fashioned. He ain't new age. He's still saying obey. Obedience. Pay attention and turn toward the first voice of the seer with close attention to what's being said. That's what the word means. The focus. Discipline. The word disciple. That's what problem is most Christianity. is undisciplined. They, the best Christians are former military, uh, ex-Catholics, ex-Muslims, people that, uh, ex, even Buddhists and some sense, people that, that had to go through some kind of discipline of some type of boxing, martial arts, something, where you had to go through discipline, training. They make the best Christians. But these spoiled brat, second and third generation, born with a Silver Jesus spoon in their mouth, make the worst Christians know it all, but know nothing. Christians. Especially the ones that get a little misinformation from the Bible, from their Bible uh, cemeteries, I call them, instead of seminaries, cemetery school. Them are the worst. They try, <laughs> try to club you over the head with the Greek and Hebrew and abuse that too. It's bad enough they're abusing English. <laughs> Making a club out of it and go to the ancient language, try to twist that too. Just like the Pharisees and scribes in Jesus' day. And the, and the hypocrites of his day. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of Amalek and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore didst thou not obey, obey, obey the voice of the Lord? But didst fly upon the spoil, he pounced, and did his evil in the sight of the Lord. Greed was greedy. I know a lot of greedy Christians. They, they, they uh, using God as a genie in a bottle to get gain down here. They're greedy. Stingy usually goes with greed. God loves a cheerful gift. They're tight as a drum. There's this bunch here. And Saul said, and the worst bunch is the religious bunch. And that's what we're dealing with here with Saul. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. He doubles down. Unrepentant, doubles down. Now this is him. He's holding on to his crown. He's not going to let go of his crown. He's not bowing to God. He's, he's saying, he's doing just like the, uh, the Pharisee did with the, the publican that was on his face. He's looking to the sky, saying, Shh. I didn't sin. I did exactly what God told me to do. Why are you uh, saying this about me? I know what, what I did. There's nothing wrong with it. And Saul said to Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Look at it, rebellious. And have gone the way which the Lord sent me. I did what the Lord told me to do. What the problem is. And have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. God said, destroy the king, too. He just read earlier. He said, wipe the king out and everything and everybody in it, and the sheep and the oxen and the animals and everything. But the people, here we go. This is CYA. To cover your ass. This is what he's doing. But the people took up the spoil, sheep and oxen, blaming it on them. And you the king, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord, the God of Gilgal. Oh, they did it for a religious reason. 
hiding under this. A lot of people that do things hide under the scourge. Oh, it's for the, for the Lord. The reason I'm robbing and stealing and doing this and that. It's for the Lord. It's all good. And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. God don't care about your sacrifice. He cares about obedience. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So I done met a lot of full-blown wizards and witches flying around on brooms in the church sanctuary. Plenty of them, Christian witches and Christian wizards. with the wrong spirit and got God's spirit. Satan is a great imitator. I've seen demonic tongues plenty of times in the church and demonic pastors with demonic tongues. Jesus said, you're known by their fruit. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as the iniquity of idolatry. Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. He took his crown. And God will take your crown. And remember the title of this message. Casting your crown before the throne of God. Better to do that in your million than have God take your throne and rejecting you as king and his king. That means you're going to hell. Saul went to hell. He's burning right now. He ain't in heaven. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. Just idle words with true repentance. And thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. You can't serve the people. Pay close attention. You pastors, this is for you. You can't serve the people and serve God. You can't give the people what they want and massage the people. If somebody ain't twitching in your church feeling uncomfortable, getting upset from some of your messages, you ain't teaching God's word. Where does it be embracing? Brother Jay is a salt. He's abrasive. Give him a teaching to uh, Brother Aaron, the people's pastor. That's most of the church. What the people want. You know. Building golden calves for the people. And turning their hearts away from God. And got them in the mammon and the Jezebel Boar Church of Rome. And everything else but God, this new age gospel, false gospel, new age false gospel. The preaching Madame Velasky behind the pulpits. Bunch of Christian witches and wizards. That's what this is. A bunch of them in the church. And a bunch of pastors, too. So, quote, in quotes, pastors, too. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as iniquity, and idolatry. Holding on to your crown, refusing to cast before the throne of God. Because I was rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. God took his crown. And he doubles down. And Samuel said, in verse 26, slide on down. He, uh, Saul is busy with his fake slobbering and dry, false repentance. It didn't come from the heart. He doubled down just early his rhetoric. He just did that to try to snow the prophet of God and the snow God, but you can't snow job him. He sees it right to your heart, to your core. Can't fool God. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return unto thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected thee from being king over Israel. That's 1 Samuel 15. 26. Took his crown because he wouldn't cast his crown. Now let's look at another guy that's sin. We'll go right to him too. He's King David. Now you give my teaching Saul versus David. Where I get in depth with, with that. With that this isn't the message right now. Message is humility. Casting our crowns before God's strong. Before God take your crown. Because of your pride and stubbornness and rebellion. I told you this message is going to be different. 
Second Samuel. Twelve three. But the poor man had nothing save one little you land. Now this is David. Well, I'm gonna give you the backdrop real quick. David uh, stole the man's wife Bathsheba from when they hit a captain of his army, Uriah. And a man that was very loyal. He was a, of the Hittite people. Very loyal to David. Instead of David rewarding for his loyalty, David his, uh, Uriah's house happened to be close to David's and he spotted her nude sunbathing and that's the end of that story. He had to have her in his bed. Now he already had, I believe, ten concubines or ten wives. But that wasn't enough. Even God said, I would have gave you more. Why'd you steal this man's wife here? But he stole the man's wife, knocked her up, got her pregnant, and then he killed the man. Uh, he didn't kill him physically, but he, he gave the order to send him into the place as far as the war was the hottest, knowing that he would get killed. Because the survival rate would be great, and it would be like uh, sending us to the most heated war zone in the world, or one of our soldiers, where the mortality rate was great. That's what he did. And he got, he was killed. And then he took his wife after the morning and to, to cover the sin of the pregnancy and, and hurry up and marry her. And so he thought God didn't see. But God saw and sees everything. And, and he sent Nathan the prophet, just like God sent Samuel to Saul. God sends Nathan to David, King David. And the Lord said unto Nathan, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich, the other poor. The rich man had exceeding flocks and herds, and the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take it of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the warfaring man that was coming to him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth that man, and have done this thing, shall surely die. <laughs> now God's giving him a parable of what he did regarding that man's wife. And David was a king, could have access to all kind of women in the king. But he took the one man's wife. See how we are? How upset we get at a sin that we're doing when we see somebody else doing? You want a judge to be hard on a thief? Make a ex-thief a judge. Boy, he'll get the, like almost the death penalty, if not the death penalty. He'll be the hardest judge. Get an ex a former thief as a judge. You want a tough prosecutor on murder, get a former murder to be set up there on the bench. They'll really throw the book at it. <laughs> That's human nature. <laughs> we recognize something in ourselves, we really punish that person. It's a law of psychology and dynamics. You're harder on a person of something that you're covering and guilty of. You're more overt, harder on on the person of something you covertly cover, uh, uh, action or sin that you're doing. I remember when these strutting, sweating, thundering, hellfire and brimstone preachers used to, used to preach on a certain sin. I, as a kid, I figured it out. I said, that's the sin he's doing. That's the very sin he's doing. Uh, one prominent one. 
I ain't gonna say his name, I don't name drunk. But he was always on whores. And whores burning in hell. And, and uh, the tricks as well as the whore himself. What he, and I said one day he gonna get caught with a whore. What happened? One day he got caught in a seedy hotel with a whore. One preached on homosexuality, uh, putting all gay people in here. What well, did he get caught with? A man in the closet. Hypocrisy. I'll give my teaching, thou hypocrite. Another bit. Thou hypocrite. We're harder on someone else, a sin that we secretly, covertly doing. We're harder overtly on the person that's committing the sin. And here's Dave. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said unto David, Thou art that man. You are that man. Now you just gave the death penalty to yourself. He said, That man so surely died, so that's you. You just gave your own self to death penalty. Uh, I bet you walked back on that. And Nathan said unto David, Thou art that man. Thus saith the Lord of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel and delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. God I'm always reminded of the, the humble beginnings. You were nobody until I made you a somebody and gave you a crown. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives unto thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have more over given unto thee such and such things. They would have gave you more wives. Them wives would have never gave you more women. <laughs> Good to be king. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah, the Hittite, with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Amy. God reminded him of his sin. God reminded you of your sin too. That's why it's not good. I will say he that covereth his sin should have been proverb shall not prosper he that confesses it and forsake it shall have mercy it's proverbs now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house because you know, this is God's judgment on now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife God told them not to marry outside their, their, their uh, particular tribe then anyway for a certain reason. Because these women would lead them astray and have them bow unto their gods. That's why. It had nothing to do with racism. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and he shall lie with thy wives on the sight of the sun. Now God did that. Give him a teaching, Absalom. On Absalom, uh, David's son. That's what he did. He slept, slept with his, his father's wives on the roof. Sunlight in front of everybody. He had an orgy right up there on the roof. For thou didst this in secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Now David confessed his sin. He didn't say, he didn't go sideways and say it's the people's fault. It's that body's fault. That's covering your ass. It's see why. And those that do that with God will not prosper. Just read you Proverbs or quoted Proverbs through your. And we're, sin we're sinners till we up out of here, saved by grace. But there are going to be times that we, we're not perfect. I'm far from perfection. Don't look at me. I said that to you girls. Follow the street girl. You said that to me. You know. I ain't it. I ain't your symbol. <laughs> God and I working it out. I struggle at times. I ain't the one with the cape flying around. Sparks flying out my ass. That's not me. God has brought me a long ways considering where I started out. Probably, you wouldn't have known me then, but I definitely wouldn't have liked me. Thank God for that. For thus, for thou didst this in secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel. That's how God is. When He exposes you, He's going to expose you and He's going to let it all hang out. And before the sun, 
And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. At least he repented. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord hath also put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. I ain't going to kill you. But I'm going to kill some other people. Howbeit, because of this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord. You opened the door for Satan to come in. So now I have to give you some divine judgment and justice. I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to spare your life. But a sacrifice has to be made. And y'all has given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. To blaspheme. Say, look at David. Look what he's doing. He's getting away with murder and adultery. What you going to do, God? That's how Satan come. Say, lay. Brother Jay getting away with this and that. He's, he's constantly out there accusing. He did this. He did that. What you going to do, God? That's why the Bible said not to give place to the devil. And if you were walking in the spirit, you won't fulfill the law of the flesh, as Paul talked about. But you just got to be in faith. Because once you step out of that, the old man takes over. And J.B. right back out, Brother J.B. out there doing the same stuff. You got to deliver him from. And that's, God calls that a pig returning to a slot, or a dog is vomit in the New Testament. Returning to what God had delivered you from and set you free from a particular sin, whatever the sin may be. God's dealing with one sin at a time. One or another. None of us are perfect. He ain't going to sin until you're out of here. But God's grace is sufficient for us. I teach grace. It's a grace teaching ministry, not perfection of works ministry here. But this ministry also teaches. That God saves from sin. He's not going to save you in sin. I don't care what your sin is. Lying is just as bad as homosexuality. And lying can take you to hell just like homosexuality can. Sorry. I met a lot of Christian liars. Their word is crap. They really don't believe. In Revelation, we say all liars have a part in the lake of fire. God hates liars. So that your word be.